Thanks, everybody, for attending this afternoon. Um, first of all, I want to say I knew I was going to be amongst uh, members of the military. Now, anybody who knows me, Shanae, Deborah, knows that I and my wife know I get up in the morning and I put on whatever shoes are, at the, are by my front door. Well, I knew I was going to be amongst some really sharp people. So I want you all to see this. Uh, my shoes have never shined, <laughs> ever. So you give me some applause. <laughs> look, look, look. <laughs> that is not a part of my existence. I want to be honest about that. But <laughs> spit shine. Well, actually, it's Burlington Coat Factory, little thing in your hand, and you shine it. That's what it is. I took the easy way out. But thank you all for coming today. I want to first thank the board staff. I see Shanae over here, Deborah over here, um, and, and our, our media crew um, have always been very helpful, and we should begin every event that we have, whether it's at dinner with our families or an event for the school district, by uh, saying thanks. Um, you are an incredible staff, and uh, we are really very blessed and fortunate, fortunate to have you. Uh, and I know this may take some time, but I think it's worth it. Would Deborah and Shanae stand up, please? I want you all to give them a round of applause. They, they work in the shadows, and we don't give them enough credit. Tom and Todd are here, too. Uh, they are always, uh, it seems to be, behind the camera, but uh, make every attempt to make sure that our message gets out, and we appreciate you all's effort as well. Um, I want to thank my colleagues on the board uh, for, uh, in this regard, for thinking out of the box. I realize that not everybody uh, will, uh, is used to this kind of situation. Normally when you talk about opening up a school, it has nothing to do with the military. This is a unique way of thinking, but that's how this Board of Education is. We have no idea that we are unwilling to consider. I want to thank you all for stopping by today, especially the members of the committee. Uh, today I want to uh, share with you all the worst kept secret in Rochester, New York. Uh, that is, on this day, the Board of Education is announcing its intention to investigate the feasibility of opening and operating a military academy in the Rochester City School District. We will do this through a, the creation of a special committee, a special advisory committee. The bylaws of the Board of Education allow the president to, uh, with the advice and consent of the full board, to impanel such a committee, and I have decided to do that here today. We are fortunate to have assembled a fine group of citizens, as you can see here, um, that will serve on this special committee. We have prepared a list of those citizens, and the list of those citizens is in your press packet. Uh, I think you will agree with me that these folks come from a cross-section of our community and from a variety of disciplines. They include a retired chief of police, a retired Monroe County probation officer, a pastor, two college professors, a firefighter, a coach, a community organizer, actually several community organizers, several teachers from several different school districts uh, covering several different disciplines and subject matters, including science, math, and social studies, two administrators, military personnel, some active duty, some retired, from the Air Force, the Army, the Army Reserve, and the United States Navy. Many have served our country, including at places like Afghanistan and Iraq. I want to say what has often become cliche, but it comes from my heart. We want to thank you for your service abroad and in our city. If we are missing anyone on this committee, I have asked our two co-chairs to advise me of such and to make sure we make appropriate recommendations to fully impanel this committee to make sure that every discipline Every viewpoint is a part of their work. Whatever the final composition of the special committee, their task is quite clear. Their task is to examine from a financial and an instructional perspective the viability, the feasibility, and the practicality of opening a military academy within the Rochester City School District, not only for Rochester City School uh, District students, and city residents, but residents throughout this county. A copy of their charge is part of your press packet. The Special Advisory Committee will have just 60 days, much to the chagrin of our co-chairs, just 60 days. I'll say that one more time. Just 60 days. Everybody say it with me. Just 60 days to issue its recommendations to the Board of Education. 
I want to tell you procedurally what will happen after those recommendations uh, are had and compiled. Uh, they will be referred to the Board of Education's Finance Committee and our Excellent in Student Achievement Committee for additional vetting and review before those recommendations come to the full board. All this is absolutely necessary as we want to make sure that what we do or don't do is in the best interest of the citizens of this community. Now at this particular time, I had asked Todd Baxter and Ulysses Miranda, who are co-chairs of the special committee, to come forth and make some brief comments. And then I'd like to introduce the students after these gentlemen are through. Todd, you want to go first? Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you, and it's an honor to be uh, asked to be part of this, uh, this exploratory committee. I heard about it, as you said, they're probably the world's best kept secret, right? Uh, and I immediately wanted to be part of it, uh, being a 22-year member of the United States Army and also a graduate of the Jefferson High School here in the city of Rochester, realizing leaving school without much sense of a direction, I realized this day, 50 years later, at the age of 50, what the military gave me uh, leaving the streets of the city of Rochester, a sense of direction, a sense of character, a sense of purpose, and, and a drive, lifelong skills that uh, I would love to be able to impart uh, should this exploratory committee recommend and the city school district adopt uh, a military mindset earlier in the careers of, of our young people. You know, I'm thinking of uh, these skills I brought on at 18, 19 years old were skills I, I could have had better served at 15 years old and 14 years old in those formative years of my life. Uh, leaving Jefferson High School and now so many years later, I look back and, and the military gave me almost everything. And, and if you think about the sense of duty and, and the camaraderie, the discipline, everything we're looking for in our young people. As we form this exploratory committee, and it's just that, it's, it's, it's a professional committee, we may make recommendations that are pro or con, but I, I think right now as I look at the end product, I would look for a measurable, if we did have this, this uh, great school amongst us, I would look at the reverse of the urban-suburban. We're seeing the, you know, the, the flight of folks going out to the suburban community. I think if we do raise such a school, and it's such a professional level, that it's gonna attract folks back to the city of Rochester also, and I'd look for that to be one of the measurables. And I know it's getting the cart before the horse, but that's exciting stuff when we think about that, creating such an opportunity. And the last thing I'll leave with is, I know the city school district is doing lots of innovative things, and also going back to their grassroots. For instance, the, the vocational training at Edison Tech. This is just one more great tool we could possibly give these young people in the city of Rochester to explore as they explore their future. So I'm very excited about co-chairing this with the Colonel, and I really appreciate the opportunity to, to do this. Thank you. Well, it's great to be here. It is really uh, a lifelong thing for me to uh, be able to offer um, my services to this committee. But ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the uh, Principal Sandy Jordan and the Vice Principal Akia Kankam and staff, I want to welcome you to the Rochester Early College International High School and our U.S. Army JROTC program. It is indeed an honor for me to be asked to participate in this committee to determine the feasibility of establishing Rochester's first military academy in high school. Many people may not know that the Rochester City School District maintains only two JROTC programs in the district. A single gender JROTC unit is currently assigned to the Leadership Academy at Charlotte. Our program, run by Sergeant First Class Retired John Singleton and myself, here at Rochester Early College International High School, has drawn several student cadets from surrounding area high schools, such as Spencerport, Greece, and Brockport. Parental interest in military high schools is expanding because many parents are searching for the unique education and opportunities that a military high school can offer. Our cadets come from our JROTC after school program for several reasons. I believe that they come to us because they want to be part of something that makes them proud to wear a uniform and makes them active in the Rochester community. Because we're so active around the city of Rochester, our cadets are able to connect education to the community and the people of Rochester. We are motivating young people to be better citizens. And it is my feeling that young people want the discipline and they want to have fun in a structured school environment. Calling this committee together, together to consider a greater opportunity for our JROTC programs and for students in the Rochester area is something that I am very excited about. We are bringing together a group of people who are committed to improving the education for our high school students while also inviting students from outside the district to take benefit from a military school style of education. This will expand JROTC school regardless of which branch, Army, Navy, Marine Corps, or Air Force will take the lead. 
By any measure, the two existing Army JROTC programs have been a success and have attracted many students to our city schools. It is my hope that this committee can take an objective look at this military school style of education and see if it is a viable op educational option for our community. As a graduate of high school that offered JROTC in the Army many years ago, I know firsthand how JROTC can positively change a young person's life. In high school, my JROTC instructors guided me through my high school years. My JROTC instructors taught me respect, pride, ethical behavior. Really, they taught me all of the values of loyalty, duty, respect, selfless service, honor, integrity, and personal courage. They also taught me that it was not okay to walk across the grass instead of using the sidewalk or throw a piece of trash in the school parking lot when nobody was looking. For me, JROTC allowed me to study the military college options that were available through U.S. Army. Young people and their families may not know how to apply for military college scholarships or even know that there are military junior colleges and federal military academy appointments that are available. These are some of the opportunities that I think we may be able better to offer our kids in Rochester by considering a military academy. Finally, I want to leave you with a story. During this past holiday break, one of our students who graduated last year came home on leave from his Navy unit stationed in California. While he was visiting his grandparent and shopping for presents for his family, he dropped his wallet in the parking lot. A very honest and thoughtful person found the wallet, opened it, and saw my business card. <laughs> my business card. I always give a simple card to my cadets before they leave to boot camp and tell them that if they ever need something, anything, they can always call on me or Sergeant First Class Singleton, who's the other Army instructor that runs our JROTC program here. The honest person called me because there was no other telephone number in his wallet. Receiving the call from this person, I immediately was able to return the wallet to him. There was no money stolen, no any cards or anything was missing. But what struck me is that this young man, who had virtually nothing, nothing before he entered the Navy, who had a dim future ahead of him following high school graduation, now had a wallet full of adult things. Credit cards, a military ID card, several <coughs> cards and passes to mil the military gym and military recreational activities. And that put a smile on my face. A smile that was the result of knowing that this young man is going to be okay. He's going to be all right. And this young man, because of the Navy, has so much more than he had just a sh few short months ago. The military does that to kids. The military still does that to our young people. It gives them a great place to start. And I remember at that moment, almost crying in happiness, that he is going to make it. He's going to be a veteran someday with VA loan opportunities, GI Bill options that he would have never had without the United States Navy. Although JROTC does not or cannot recruit for the military, that opportunity is something that we can ex educate our kids about. And it is a decision that they can make. Students who decide not to pursue a military career will have the discipline and character that will give them a boost in college or a career. My hope is that by considering the first high school military academy in Rochester, this committee will consider all the good that can come from a military environment of discipline that also provides a broadened opportunity for all of our cadets in Rochester. Thank you, Mr. Van Dyke. Um, there are probably many stories on this stage. I, I, I gotta tell you, I know everybody sitting up here and I feel very blessed to do that. I feel very burdened by the fact that we can't share all their stories, um, but I, I gotta do something that perhaps is gonna get me in trouble. There are at least a couple people up here that are very responsible for what happened today. Uh, Captain Geiger uh, is one and um, uh, 
Captain Kyler. Where'd you go? Oh, there he is. And, and these gentlemen shared their stories with me. And there are, there are many others. I, I, again, I could get myself in trouble for this. There are many distinguished people here who've made major contributions to the community. And we all should be very, very, very fortunate that they are willing to share their stories and their experience with each other and then with the full board. But these two gentlemen uh, came to my office probably about, what, six, seven months ago, maybe more. And they have diligently pushed uh, me to consider this idea. And I, I wanted to tell them both that um, I appreciate that. And uh, I, I bring that up because I want folks to understand that good leadership, and all you folks know this, happenings, happens by listening. And, and that's all the board is doing here. We're going to be good leaders by listening to other leaders. Uh, so I want to thank these two gentlemen for their efforts. And then the other thing that we absolutely positively must do is thank our young people. My goodness, they look good here, don't they? Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> Young people look good. Could you do me the honor of introducing the two young cadets who uh, I would ask to say just a few words and then we'll take whatever questions folks may have. Okay, absolutely. Um, I'm not gonna name all the cadets up here. The ones that, um, um, that uh, we've selected to be part of our committee is Akan, and he's over here, he's a sergeant, cadet sergeant, Akan. Um, I believe Davian Walters has also been selected to be a part of our committee and a young lady, uh, Winton Poirier, who's uh, not available here today. Um, but these are um, sort of the best of the best. And it's hard to select um, those cadets to go to some of these special events and be part of special uh, things like this because we have a great group of, of cadets, um, almost 100 strong, drawing from all these different areas. And uh, so I'm very proud of them. I'm very proud that you, you see them come the first day and they don't know how to, to dress properly. Um, and we show them those sorts of things and uh, a couple of weeks go by and they know how to wear the uniform as proudly as any Army, Navy, Marine Corps veteran there is out there. So I'm very proud of them, sir. But this is uh, a great unit and uh, I want to tell you that Sergeant Singleton and I every day, um, we're doing great things for the kids and uh, um, I thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, gentlemen, um, ladies and gentlemen for, for everything you've done. Thank you. Any questions of anybody up here? That, that is part of what they're being asked to look at. Again, the, the charges contain your press packets, but yes, absolutely. I mean, there, there aren't a lot of options. Um, our preference would be, of course, something that is already set up like a school, but if they choose something else, they've got to let us know what the cost implications of that would be. And again, you see the type of experience that we have here. These are the folks that can do that kind of stuff, uh, I would think, without too much difficulty. They know the community. Uh, they know the expense of uh, carrying on an initiative like this. Uh, so th they're asked to, to look at where this thing might go. Are there existing synergies? Are there existing things that are happening already in the district where this could be sort of uh, worked into those existing programs or buildings? Well, uh, very briefly, what I've experienced when I went to Buffalo was a, a, a dynamic school. Um, if anybody has not been there, you really should go. It's a charter school. Um, there are no restrictions on what this committee can consider. I will tell you, I, I'm just a straight shooter. I would prefer it be a public school. But if this committee, and th these are all independent leaders, so I don't have any problem saying what my preferences are because they know how to reach their own conclusions. But um, that's a charter school. Uh, there are examples, and many of these gentlemen know this because they told me about it, there are examples of pub, traditional public schools, I think in Connecticut, right, Chenet? And I think even in Pennsylvania. So uh, they've got, they don't have to, uh, with all due respect, they don't have to reinvent the wheel. Uh, there are examples of, of these things, and I, uh, these folks are the ones who told me about these things. So um, they could go to Buffalo uh, in an hour and get there, but they could go to Connecticut and learn a little more. They don't physically have to do that. They could use Skype. Um, I mean, there's all kinds of opportunities to investigate how this thing could operate beyond Buffalo is what I'm saying. Yes, Tim. Well, I'm not the one to answer that question. I don't know that anybody here can. Um, if, uh, if I can correct that a little bit. 
Well, well, why don't you go ahead and try? But the thing is, we don't really know how it would operate here in Rochester, but you want to give it a try? Sure. Um, military academies are run uh, like military colleges and high schools throughout the nation, nation where you'll have a staff that could be uh, in uniform as instructors. Um, one of the things we see in many schools uh, today, we try to uh, implement uniform policies, and those uniform policies don't stay because many of our young people don't have a good example. When we have every teacher, every instructor that's in their uniform, then we portray that example for them. I see in the academy uh, a student leader going from class to class as a squad with that student taking math and history with that cohort, four or five cadets, from class to class and being responsible for the actions of those three to four students. That's the environment that I th see that's different from a JROTC program and different than a regular high school. Of course, there are many rules and regulations that we'll follow. Um, there'll be change of command and change of responsibility. A commandant instead of a vice principal would take care of disciplinary actions. Instead of security, we would have trade uh, uh, TAC officers, tactical officers, that will take care of those sorts of things as maybe a secondary responsibility within the school. So uh, one need not have to go very far to find some of these differences that would happen in a military academy as opposed to a regular school or as opposed to simply a JROTC program like we have here at Early College. Let me add. In continuation what the Lieutenant Colonel said, the curriculum that I saw in the past and the curriculum that is going to be implemented, we could go 7th, 8th, 9th, 11th, and 12th grade. The curriculum could be twisted a little bit to make it better, feasible, workable, to make those young men and women prepare with more character, more values, more discipline to face future education in college and get better prepared to face the work environment. But it's not, it has been successful. We have nothing to lose, trust me. My experience is a win, win, win situation because we are going to apply the similar curriculum. Yes, a little twist because we have to. It's not going to be a perfect. Thank you very much. I, I like his phrase. It's a win-win, not win-win, but a win-win-win-win situation. Um, let me also add, uh, and I'm blessed to know a lot of these folks up here, um, the, the experience that these folks have, Hector, for example, is a former probation officer. I met him when I was at the DA's office. You know we have a chief of police. George Moses runs one of the most successful uh, community-based programs. So yeah, there are models, Tim, in Buffalo uh, and beyond that have curriculum and we could say this is how it would operate. But listen, there's no need to take all these folks with all this experience uh, and, and not pay attention to that and not make an, a model organic to Rochester. So I, I, I want to make clear the Board of Education charged these folks is, yeah, there are models in Connecticut and Pennsylvania and in Buffalo. But if that's all you're going to do, we don't need you. But we understand that you have great experiences um, with the kids and students and community of Rochester, New York. So our expectation is, the Board of, Ex Board of Education's expectation is that they will grow an organic model that fits very much with the high school that you went with, the, the uh, citizens that you used to talk to, um, that you still talk to. So, uh, any other questions? Yes, sir. When do you anticipate this to begin? The actual school? Yeah. Well, that's a question that I cannot answer because the committee and the board haven't made any decisions. If the committee comes up with some ideas that the board finds attractive, a number of things will take into will have to take into account in terms of when it would kick off. Um, if the costs are prohibitive and we need some time to ramp up and, and get some money on, on the next budget, because right now, I want to tell everybody, we are planning our budget for the 16-17 fiscal year right now. So there's, there's very little opportunity, to be honest, for us to de design something and put it into this budget. So I don't want to build up some set of false expectations. It would be great if we could get this thing, if the board wants to do it, online by September 2016, but that's very... I would say very unlikely. Uh, but a lot does depend on 
um, what this committee recommends and what the board wants to do. If there's very little cost to it, it, it could get online sooner than I expect. We don't know. Well, uh, not initially, because the idea just wasn't out there. But um, one of your colleagues in the media learned that this was something that I was interested in because some folks picked my ear and said, hey, this is a good uh, 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 Captain Kyler has a great story. I'm not a military guy. Uh, he, you know, he's a captain of, a, of the, the, the Goodman, what used to be the Goodman section, Clinton, the downtown Goodman section. Yeah, I mean, he, and he, you know, you can ask him, but he's got a great, as all these folks do, a great personal story about his journey. Sounds similar to Todd's, right? Um, so I, I don't know exactly uh, how this thing will flush out. I do know we have the people that can create a model that is organic and meaningful to our citizens in this community. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Well, um, let me just sort of add to your question, Tim, and to this question here. When uh, people started talking to me about it, uh, one of your colleagues in the media started talking about it, and that's when parents started calling me and saying, hey, this is, and, and let me tell you something, these aren't just people from Joseph Avenue, Goodman, uh, Mulberry, they're from across this community. That's what's one of the really exciting things about this. As Todd says, we need to start talking about reverse urban-suburban, right? We need to stop the flow of students going into, no offense, to charter schools. The only way we can do that is come up with models that make sense. And parents hear, uh, parents who need things for their kids hear about this idea and they say, hey, listen, how do I do this? I, and it's not just parents. It's staff members are calling me and saying, when is this starting? Can I apply to be a teacher? Can I apply to be an administrator? So I think there is a real interest in the idea. Uh, and, but I, to tell you the truth, you didn't hear about it until people started talking about it. I think there's a real set of low expectations for this district. They don't expect us to do stuff like this. They wait for somebody else to. And when we do, just like with the charter schools, this was Kevin Costner's movie, build it and they will come, right? Build the dreams, right? This is our dream, to have a district that people want to be in. And I'm not just talking about people from the city. We, we can build such a district. And this is an example of how we can build such a district. Yes, yes, sir. How many kids do we? That's another one of those questions. Unfortunately, I cannot answer, and that's why we've been, uh, assembled this group of uh, experienced folks. Uh, you know, I think the school in Buffalo, Shanae, do you know how many school? Uh, see, I, I don't know how many they have in Buffalo. I know. I think I read their last graduating class was just under, I think it was 87 or something like that. I would like to think that ours could be bigger than that. Um, uh, it, it also, to answer that question, depends on where this school ends up. What's the, what's the building capacity? I mean, th this, this board, this uh, advisory committee has some, I think, some decent options. I mean, there are some existing synergies that, the, that they will quickly see, I think, that are available to them. Any other questions? Well, I think we're done then. Thank you very much for coming. And please continue to pay close attention because in how many days, guys? 60 days. 60 days. We'll be back at you. Thanks a lot. What are you guys doing for dinner? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs>